Welcome to the Technical Seminar in Thermal Analysis. My name is Lani Selis and I will be your presenter. Today's topic focuses mainly on Thermal Mechanical Analysis or TMA. From this webinar, you will learn about the basics of Thermal Mechanical Analysis and applications. We will also be showcasing our instrumentation and the available attachments with sample preparation and setting methods. The International Confederation for Thermal Analysis and Calorimetry, or ICTAC, defines thermal analysis as a group of techniques in which a property of a sample is monitored against time or temperature while the temperature of the sample in a specified atmosphere is programmed. The physical properties and their appropriate techniques are listed on this table. In our previous webinars, we have discussed significant applications in simultaneous thermal analysis and in differential scanning calorimetry. Today, we focus on the evaluation of a material's mechanical property by thermal mechanical analysis method. Here is a list of thermal events that can be evaluated by thermal analysis, such as STA, DSC, and TMA. Since our topic today focuses on thermal mechanical analysis or TMA, the reactions that can be evaluated with TMA are glass transition, expansion, shrinkage, detection of softening temperature, and sintering behavior. The webinar contents are shown in the slide. We will discuss on the basics of TMA, principles of single rod or non-differential type TMA and differential type TMA, coefficient of thermal expansion, different modes in TMA and their applications. We also have some videos to watch during the webinar showcasing our user-friendly TMA system and especially on how to run a measurement with a sample length of less than 2 mm. Thermal mechanical analysis, or TMA, is a technique in which the temperature of a sample in a specified atmosphere is programmed and that the sample's change in dimension is monitored as a function of temperature time. Here is a model data of a TMA curve plotted against temperature. The vertical axis is a change in length, or delta L, which can be quantified in terms of percent or in micrometer. An increasing TMA curve denotes expansion, while a t decreasing TMA curve means shrinkage. The appropriate method or measurement mode can be selected depending on the measurement objective as well as the sample shape. With our TMA system, you can measure from room temperature up to 1,500 degrees centigrade. In TMA, the measurement mode varies with the type of sample and measurement objective, and the criteria for selecting a measurement mode are shown in this table. The compression loading method is used to measure rod type or block type samples for the detection of expansion, shrinkage, and glass transition of a material ranging from 10 mm to 20 mm in length. In this webinar, we will show you how to measure a sample with a length of less than 10 mm. The tensile loading method is used for the measurement of fiber, sheet, or film type materials for the detection of expansion, shrinkage, or glass transition. The sample length here is specific, which is 10 mm, 15 mm, and 20 mm in length. On the other hand, the penetration method is used for the detection of softening temperature in film or even block type samples. The material thickness is 4 mm in size. The TMA8311 corresponds to the single rod or non-differential type TMA and differential type TMA. In the single rod or non-differential type TMA, you can find a support pipe or support tube and a detection rod for the sample. 
while in the differential type TMA you can see a support pipe or support tube and two detection rods. One is for the sample and the other one is for the reference material. Both attachments can correspond to sample lengths of 10 to 20 mm. In the next two slides, each of these measurement principles will be explained. The so non-differential type TMA, or generally termed as single rod TMA, is suitable for polymers or materials with large thermal expansion. In this system, when heated, the support pipe, the detection rod, and the sample length changes. Therefore, the output data or delta L observed will be equivalent to the change in length of the sample, the detection rod, and the support pipe. And since the CTE value of polymers is 10,000 times larger than the expansion of the detection rod and support pipe, the CTE value of the detection rod and the support pipe becomes negligible. On the other hand, if you want to measure a material with a very low thermal expansion, such as C-axis sapphire with a CTE value of 8 times 10 raised to the power of minus 6, 1 per meter Kelvin, then this method cannot provide an accurate result. In this case, the differential type TMA is an effective means. The differential type TMA, exclusively manufactured by Rigaku, is highly effective for materials with low thermal expansion or shrinkage because we can obtain an accurate measurement through differential means. The output D TMA data, or delta L observed, is carried out by the differential transducer where you can find the core connected to the detection rod for the sample and the coil connected to the detection rod for the reference material. And because the de these detection rods and the support pipe are made of the same material, we can cancel the change in length in these materials following the formula shown in this slide. In a differential type TMA, the reference material is a material with a known thermal expansion, and since our objective is detecting the delta L in the sample, through standard correction of the delta L in reference material using the software, the delta L of the sample will be equivalent to the observed delta L in TMA. Through this, the sample's delta L can be measured accurately. Materials tend to exhibit volumetric changes in response to a change in temperature, which can be expressed in a numerical value called coefficient of thermal expansion or CTE. When calculating the CTE of a material at a particular temperature, first we need to calculate the thermal expansion of a material at a given temperature. All these calculations are performed by the software. Here is an example of a thermal expansion and CTE calculation by the software at a specific base temperature. CTE values are used as a determining factor, especially in multi-layer materials. If a stacked material have different CTE values, it may cause warpage of multi-layer boards. When exposed to a higher temperature, one material may expand differently from the other, or when exposed to a lower temperature, the other material may shrink differently from the other materials that are stacked together, creating gaps in between materials. In TMA, we have three basic measurement modes, namely compression loading method, penetration loading method, and tensile loading method. First, we will discuss about compression loading method. The compression loading method is used for the measurement of expansion, shrinkage, or glass transition of a block type, rod-shaped, or generally a freestanding material with 10 mm to 20 mm in length. Riga provides a differential type and non-differential type compression loading attachment. 
The maximum load that we can apply is 1000 millinewtons. The maximum operating temperature depends on the detection rod and support pipe. For measurements up to 1100 degrees centigrade, we use the quartz type detection rod and support pipe. For measurements up to 1500 degrees centigrade, we use the alumina type detection rod and support pipe. When performing measurements, it is ideal that the top and the bottom of the sample should be flat and parallel. In the compression loading attachment, there are two types of detection rods. The R-type detection rod shown on the left side, which is a standard. Here, the amount of load applied per surface is larger because of a smaller contact surface. This is ideal for metals, ceramics, alloys, where there is no deformation of sample shape. On the other hand, the flat type detection rod is ideal for materials such as polymers where there is a deformation of sample shape due to the applied load. Using this rod, the amount of load applied per surface area is dispersed. This application shows us a TMA measurement of PET material by compression loading method. It was measured from room temperature up to 200 degrees centigrade with an applied load of 30 millinewtons. As we increase the temperature, a sudden increase in expansion is observed from 80 degrees centigrade due to glass transition of PET. During glass transition, the sample condition is soft and rubbery. Although the sample is expanding during glass transition, but during measurement, since a load is applied, Instead of observing an expansion from 93 degrees centigrade, the result reveals shrinkage up to 136 degrees centigrade. In this case, the detection rod has crushed the sample. Then at 159 degrees centigrade, we can observe a shrinkage on the PET sample, revealing a volumetric, volumetric shrinkage. In this slide, we compare the DSC measurement result and the TMA measurement result of PET material. We understand that the expansion curve at 80 degrees centigrade is due to glass transition, and that after the glass transition, the sample presents a shrinkage curve up to 130 degrees centigrade due to softening. While the DSC curve shows an exosomic peak at 130 degrees centigrade due to crystallization. From these results, we can deduce that the sample hardens due to crystallization at 130 degrees centigrade, which causes the sample's change to stop in the shrinkage direction. In addition, the TMA measurement result suggests that the sample slightly expanded during the crystallization process and after that the sample shrinks along with the completion of crystallization. This figure shows the compression loading measurement result of epoxy resin. The sample presents an expansion curve with a slope change at 112 degrees centigrade due to glass transition. Comparing the CTE at 50 degrees centigrade before a glass transition and at 150 degrees centigrade, the CTE value increases nearly three times after the glass transition temperature. In this application, we demonstrate the load dependence on the glass transition of PET by compression loading method. We measured the PET material by several load conditions of 10, 20, 50, 100, and 500 millinewtons, respectively. The sample presents an expansion curve with a slope change at 80 degrees centigrade due to glass transition, followed by a shrinkage curve due to softening, and these thermal behaviors show load dependence. The larger the load, the less likely that we can observe expansion during the glass transition because the detection rod with a larger load will immediately crush the sample. For polymer samples, smaller loads like 10 to 50 millinewton is ideal. For samples like metals, ceramics, a larger load is recommended. 
This figure shows a TMA compression loading measurement result of copper plates on 400 micrometer thickness direction. In samples that have a minute expansion, the differential type compression loading method is effective. Comparing the expansion results of this sample to the literature values at the base temperature of 30 degrees, the measurement expansion results are within 10%. Here is a TMA application on the glass transition and softening temperature of glass by compression loading method. The result shows an expansion curve with a slope change at 290 degrees centigrade due to glass transition. Then the sample shrinks with a softening after glass transition. With this data, we can conclude that the deformation point is observed at 309 degrees centigrade. This figure shows the TMA compression loading measurement result of green ceramics. Results show a shrinkage at 778 degrees centigrade due to sintering. A shrinkage of 20% is observed until 950 degrees centigrade, which indicates the completion of sintering process. With a TMA, the information on the onset and onset temperatures of sintering and shrinkage of each temperature can be analyzed. This video will show us how to install the differential type compression loading attachment. So this is a differential type compression loading attachment. Here you can see two detection rods. One is for the sample and one is for the uh, reference material. First, we need to remove the TMA cover by turning counterclockwise and make sure that the power is off. Place the support tube inside the furnace Then place each of the detection rods inside the support pipe. Attach the detection rods to the coil that is for the uh, reference material. Then connect the detection rod for the sample to the core. Then attach the support pipe through the connector. Then securely fasten the attachment using the cap nut. So that is how you install the compression loading attachment. After installing the attachment, perform TMA balance through the software and you are now ready to perform measurements. In our next video, we will show you how to perform a measurement with a sample length of less than 2 mm using the compression loading method. By using a sample stage of 10 mm in length allows you to measure samples with less than 2 mm in length. It is idea that the total sample length including the sample stage is nearly the same as that of the reference material. In this case, we use the 11 mm reference material. So first, we need to place the reference material 
by inserting it into the thermocouple. Then we need to make adjustments by adjusting the um, adjustment screw to lower the detection rod of the reference material and fix it with a standard weight. The adjustment screw is located inside the TMA window. So that is the adjustment screw. Lower, uh, lower it or adjust it to lower the detection rod. Lower it in such a manner in such a manner where the detection rod will slightly touch the reference material. Then fix it with a standard weight by placing it on the plate. In this case, we use a 100 gram standard weight. After that, we need to place the a sample stage or the base and place the thin sample, the less than two millimeter sample on top of it. So make sure you measure your sample with a vernier caliper first before placing your sample, setting your sample onto the sample stage. Make sure it is placed on the center Um, perform any adjustments if you need to. You can move the sample, um, making sure that it is placed on the center. So um, you need to confirm on the front side and on the sideways. Then after that, go to the TMA measurement software and go to uh, measure condition to apply the load. Okay. So here on the measurement uh, measuring condition, you can write down the sample name, the reference material, the atmosphere. The most important, uh, the most important factor that will affect your measurement is the sample length and the, apply, the amount of load that you need to apply. The TMA load in this case is a compression loading method, so the load is applied downwards. So it means we have to write minus 30 millinewton then you have to load, uh, apply the load through load execution. The load compensation length is equivalent to the sample stage plus your sample material. Okay. Confirm that the detection rod touches the sample when the load is applied. Do not forget to remove the rubber sheet before closing the furnace and make sure that the sample is not displaced when closing the furnace. Okay, so you need to confirm visually. After closing the furnace, you can go back to the software and click uh, and uh, set the measurement condition like temperature range and heating rate. Then you can run your measurement. So open the temperature program, enter the temperature details, the maximum temperature uh, for your measurement. After that, you need to click run. We will now continue with the penetration loading method. The penetration method is used for the measurement of softening temperature of a film, sheet, or solid samples with a maximum thickness of 4 mm. The Rigaku TMA8311 corresponds to the single rod or non-differential type as well as differential penetration type attachment. With a penetration loading attachment, you can measure up to 600 degrees centigrade and the maximum load that can be applied is 1000 mN. In this application, we measure the parts of a PET bottle, namely the top, the sides, and the bottom, using the penetration method, measuring from room temperature 
up to 200 degrees centigrade with an applied load of 50 millinewtons. The top part and the bottom part shows an increase in thermal expansion at 80 degrees centigrade due to glass transition, followed by softening temperature at 120 degrees centigrade, which ended at 140 degrees centigrade due to crystallization. The bottom part and the top part shows a similar thermal behavior, indicating that these materials contain large amount of amorphous. Since the side part does not exhibit softening phenomena, it could be that this PET is a crystalline-rich material. The next measurement mode is the tensile loading method. The tensile loading method is used for the measurement of expansion, shrinkage of a film, fiber, or sheet samples. Here, the detection rod and the support pipe is made of quartz, where you can measure from room temperature up to 600 degrees centigrade with a sample length of 10 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and 20 millimeter, and a sample width of 5 millimeter and a thickness of 10 to 200 micrometer. The maximum load that can be applied is 1000 millinewtons. This application is a measurement of a PET material stretched in two directions, namely A and B directions. The direction on A shows an expansion result, while the direction B shows a shrinkage result. During processing, the thermally stretched film tends to restore to its former state when heated to its processing temperature. This result indicates that the sheet was stretched in the B direction during processing. In this slide shows a kit used for the preparation of a sample for tensile loading method. The sample length that you can set here is 10 mm, 15 mm, and 20 mm in length. Next is a video showing how to mount a 15 mm sample for tensile loading method. Place the lower mounting brackets and the spacer on the base metal and tighten the side screws to prevent it from moving. So tighten the side screws, that is for the lower mounting brackets. Then place the sample on top of the spacer. Place the metal cover to prevent the sample from creases and align or adjust. After that, place the upper mounting bracket on both sides. And mount the fixture by tightening the side screws on the fixture. First, lightly uh, tighten the screws. So tighten the side screws first prior to uh, tightening the, um, the mount, the mounted sample. Do the same procedure on the other side. Then remove the metal cover Loosen the mounted fixture to remove the clamped sample. So that is how you set your sample or how to mount the sample for tensile loading attachment. Our next video will show us how to set the sample 
on the tensile loading attachment. So first we need to insert the mounted sample on the attachment and apply the load through the software or through the um, hardware. After the load is applied, place the brace on the base of the lower mounting bracket or the lower metal clamp and close the furnace to run your measurement. We also have the recently developed TMA8311 equipped with a refrigerator cooling unit that allows you to measure from minus 70 degrees centigrade up to 600 degrees centigrade for a wide range of materials that corresponds to differential and non-differential or single rod attachments. One of the options for TMA is a humidity generator system that enables to create a water vapor atmosphere ranging from room temperature to 85 degrees centigrade, 5% to 90% relative humidity with a continuous operation time of 100 hours. Using the system, the water vapor atmosphere can be controlled by the software in the temperature program. The Rigaku thermal analysis and the related lineup are shown in the slide. We have SDA8122, where you can measure from room temperature up to 1,500 degrees centigrade. DSC Vesta, where uh, you can measure from minus 170 degrees centigrade and depending on the cooling option, up to 725 degrees centigrade. TMA8311 that corresponds to differential and non-differential or single rod attachments for measurements up to 1,500 degrees centigrade. We also have an evolved gas analysis system with the commercial name Thermomass Photo where you can measure up to 1,000 degrees centigrade equipped with a skimmer type interface and with electron ionization and photo ionization techniques available as a standard. Other products such as hyphenated techniques in evolved gas analysis and XRD DSC are also available. All these systems have a wide range of options that allows you to measure for the solutions of your needs. We provide not only lectures and hands-on training sessions, but also live demonstrations on your samples for free. If you have some inquiries, you can send us an email on the email address provided in the slide. Thank you for your interest and for attending this webinar. We hope to see you again in our future sessions.